Okay, I want to go over something really quickly from yesterday that we can, we'll take a look at um, an example problem together that doesn't have to do with what we're talking about today, but I want to reiterate something yesterday because I don't think I made it quite clear enough. So let's say, for example, that you have a, um, a term like this. Let's say it's, um, give me like a two digit even number. Uh, Bigger, that's odd. 44? Okay, 44. All right, so let's say we have 44 and then 11 and then something else, some fraction, 11 over four. Okay, and I wanna figure out my common ratio. So common ratio again, what is a common ratio? Yes. Okay, so it's going up or down by the same number doing what type of math? Multiplying or, dividing. Multiplying or dividing. So that's the difference between a geometric sequence and an arithmetic. arithmetic or arithmetic sequence. That's the difference, right? So that's what we've been talking about today, but or yesterday. But what I want to reiterate is how to find that common ratio to plug it into the formula. Because remember the formula a n equals a one r n minus one. You can't plug something in here for r if it's divided by. This has to be multiplied. So I have to look at this and I have to say, okay, what am I doing to get from here to here? I'm dividing by what? No? Okay, I'm dividing by four. But I can't plug in divided by four for r. So... You can plug in a fraction, or if you don't want to do that, to figure out what your decimal would be, what number you're multiplying by, take 11, so on your calculators right now, do this. Take 11 and divide it by 44. Yes, good. So if you're looking for your common ratio and you aren't sure what it is because I, it's a divided by, take the second term, divide it by the first, and then it ends up giving you what? 0 0.25, which is what you would plug in over here for R. Okay? So you can't do like divided by 4. I can't take divided by 4 and plug that in for R because this is what kind of math in this formula. Like when it's all next to each other like that, it's multiplication, which means I can't just stick a random division sign in there. That doesn't work. So you have to figure out what you're multiplying by. So the way to do that then is to divide the second term by the first term. So for this one, oops. all right. What would you do to figure out the common ratio here? Don't just tell me what it is if you know, but what would you do to figure out the common ratio? Divide, divide what? The, the, first number. the second term divided by the first. the first term. So what would my math problem be? 411, 411 divided by 8. 822. Good. And that ends up giving you 0 0.5. So your common ratio here is 0 0.5. Good. If you looked at this, you can also see that what are you dividing by here? Two. two. So that is divided by two. Like that works. If you say that as your common ratio, that's fine. But can you plug that into the formula? No. So what do you need to plug into the formula? You need this number here. All right, because that's the one you're multiplying by. So if you're ever stuck and can't figure out what it is, take the second term and divide it by the first. Okay, that was just a random tangent because I forgot to do that yesterday. All right, so we're going to use that and we're going to move into exponential functions. So again, as kind of a review for the year, we started with linear functions. Our whole first semester was on linear functions. So linear functions, when you graph them, made a what? A straight line. And then this semester, we've moved into quadratic functions, which make a parabola. So we've made parabolas. And now we're going to move into exponential functions. 
If it's a linear function, what's the basic formula? What is it? Y equals what for a linear function? Mx plus b. Perfect. Linear formula, y equals mx plus b. What is the basic form of a quadratic? What's the standard form of a quadratic, Brendan? Uh, X2. X2. Plus or minus. We just did this for months and months, guys. What's standard form of a quadratic look like? Starts with x squared plus bx plus c. ax squared plus bx plus c. So you've got an x squared and a bx and a c. Do you have to have the b and the c? No. No, you only have to have what? The a. The a. But the x is always going to be to what power? Yes. To the second. If it's a quadratic, it'll be to the second power. Exponential functions look like this. So what do you notice about this function? It looks more like a quadratic because it has a what? An exponent, but what do you notice about it? Um, no, this is just f of x, so that's just the same as y. So remember, that's just function notation. So it could also be written like this. It doesn't go to the second power. What does it go to? Uh, to the x power. So where's your variable here? The exponent is the variable. Okay. So when we did quadratics before, they were always to the what power? To the second. This exponential function could be to the second power. It could also be to the 40th. third, fortieth, fiftieth, one hundred and twenty-second power because the exponent is the variable. All right. So if it's an exponential function, that means your variable is in the exponent position. That's why these things, when you graph them, what happens when you graph them? They shoot up. They, shoot up. they get really big, really fast. Why? Because what's increasing? As you increase this, what is this thing? The exponent. As you increase an exponent, that means you're doing what? You're multiplying, by itself. multiplying it times itself that many times, right? So if you do something like 2 to the third power, what's 2 to the third power? 2 times 2 times 2. What's 2 to the fourth power? You're multiplying it by 2 again. 2 to the fifth, multiplying by 2 again. So it's getting a lot bigger, a lot faster. So an exponential function is going to look like that. And it's going to get really big really quickly because your exponent is the variable. So the key there is that your variable is in the exponent position. So if I say, is this an exponential function? And I give you this. You would tell me, is this an exponential function? No. no. What is that? Quadratic. That's a quadratic. That's a quadratic because it goes to the second, second power. power. Okay? What about this? What kind of function is that? That's an exponential because where is the variable? It is the exponent. Okay? So it's an exponential function if your variable is in the exponent spot. So this is exponential, this is quadratic. What if it has no exponent and it's like this? This is what? Linear. That's linear. It has no exponents. That's linear. That's why it's the first one you learn, okay? Because it's the smallest of them, I guess. It's the most consistent because it'll increase at a constant rate. Okay. So what do we do then when we're solving exponential functions? Well, we're just plugging in the same way that we did in any algebra equation that we've used before, except the only difference is we're plugging in for the exponent. So it doesn't change anything you do. It's literally just about can you plug it into the right spot. So this first one says the function f of x equals 2 times 3 to the x. And again, f of x is the same as what? Y. y. So I can cross that out and just say y equals 2, 3x models an insect population after x days. What will the population be on the fifth day? So what am I going to do here? Plug in, five to the Plug in 5 to the x spot. So 2 times 3 
to the fifth. And when you do that on your calculator, how do you do it? How do you do something to the fifth power? You put the arrow, you put the arrow button. Okay, so on your calculator, you're going to do two times three to the fifth. What do you have to do with the three? Is that especially important right now, or does it matter more when it's negative? It matters more when it's negative. Is it a good habit to get into now? Yes. yes. Okay, so two times three to the fifth, which ends up giving you what? 486, which means after five days, how many insects are wherever we're talking about? 486, which is kind of true. Have you guys ever done like a science experiment or perhaps sometimes this happens at a house where like you have a piece of fruit and it goes bad and like on day one there's like one fruit fly and on day two there's like tons of fruit flies all over the place that's because that happens at an exponential rate okay so if you see like this is gross never mind have you ever seen roadkill like on the road yeah, and it's like surrounded by flies, oh, yeah. okay? So they increase at an exponential rate, which means you might go from day one, there might only be two, and then on day five, there's 486 because they increase at an exponential rate, all right? The function f of x equals 1500, 0.995 to the x power, where x is the time in years, models a prairie dog population. How many prairie dogs will there be in eight years? So what's this gonna look like? What's this going to look like? What do I have to plug into my calculator? You have to plug in 1,500. 1,500. So neither of those change. And then to the what power? Eighth power. Eighth power. So what does that end up giving you? I'm going to cut it right there, 0, 4. All right, so that means what's happening to that prairie dog population? It's decreasing. It's decreasing. How can you tell before you even do the math? How can you tell that it's decreasing? Holly? Because this is a decimal. Is it decreasing fast or slow? Slow. Slowly. After eight years, how many less are there? Only, yeah, only a few less, like 60. 59 less prairie dogs so as this this is our common ratio so that means it's almost the full population but every year a few are dying off so that means in a bunch of years what's going to happen to that prairie dog population there will be less and less and less of them unless there's some turnaround in the environment whereas with the fruit flies or whatever this is they're increasing at a common ratio of what three, and because that's more than one, so it's not a decimal number, that means that this number is getting bigger. You can expect that the population is increasing, whereas here, when it's a decimal, you can expect that it's decreasing. Brendan? If that were one or bigger, then it would be increasing. 0.995, so it's almost one, but not quite, which is why we say the population is decreasing slowly. So it's decreasing, Noticeably, not really, because this is almost one, but it is decreasing. Noticeable for those prairie dog families, because 59 of them are dead, so. In eight years. So how could I figure out what would happen in 40 years? What would I change in this formula to find out what happens in 40 years? The eight becomes a 40. Okay, do that on your calculator is what happens. Same formula, but change that eight to a 40. It should change, yeah. Is there a way to figure out? 12.7? 1227. Is there a way to figure out? Yes, there probably would be. Yeah, do you want to try? Maybe not right now. Maybe after lunch we can do something like that. That's a good idea though, because there would must be some way. Okay, so 1227.5. So after 40 years, now there's only 1200. So still, this is decreasing pretty slowly, right? What if I wanted to figure out when they're all going to be dead? What would I have to do? So you can just plug in random numbers here. Or what else could you do? Instead of saying, I know that I want this to equal what? Zero. zero. So instead of saying that, I would say zero, 1500, 0 0.995 to the x. Because now I'm asking, OK, how many years is that going to take? 
what? 10 million, 10 million years. That's your guess? Did you get it? How? I don't know. I just tried to plug All right. years. So he just, Guillermo just took a bunch of numbers and tried plugging stuff in. So we're going to talk at some point about how to solve these, but we don't really need to worry about it. Okay? So, but that's how you would do that. You'd set that equal to zero. Matthew? Well, we're not going to actually get the answer. No. Oh. Do you want it? Yeah. Guillermo just figured it out, like 10 million years. 10 million years? Yeah. You started putting in numbers. I thought that took so many years. So, well, yeah, but you're only losing, like, if it takes you eight years to lose 59, then... Oh, it's only 59? Yeah. Right? 14, 41 plus 59... Would be 1,500, yeah. After eight years, it's only 59. Are you gonna check me on that? Yeah. I hope I'm right. I mean, it's actually 58.96, but I rounded. Okay, so um, we're gonna look at then what you do to tell if something is an exponential function. Remember how we did this? We've done this for all of them. So with linear functions, it has to have a constant change in the x and y. So that's when you did like left side and right side, both had to have constant changes. In quadratic functions, there has to be a constant change in the second difference of y. So can anybody explain to me second difference? It's been a while, but what's the second difference mean of y? Like you, after, you find the first after you find the first difference, you do the difference between the differences. So that one is probably the hardest. For quadratics, all you care about is the y's, and you just want a constant ratio, which means it needs to be what kind of math? Multiplication, Multiplication or division. division, and it has to be just in the y's. So I don't care about the x's at all here. I just care about the y's, so I want a constant ratio in the y's. So what are my y values here? 1. 1.5, 3, 3, 6, 3, and 12. Okay, what do I do to get from 1.5 to 3? times 2. What about 3 to 6 and 6 to 12? So is that a constant ratio? So is this an exponential function? Yes. So this is an exponential function. So we just care about the y's. So what do I care about in this one? Which are? Okay. What do I do to go from negative 9 to positive 9? Multiply by negative 1. What do I do to go from 9 to 27? So I'm already, You're not. I'm, it's not exponential. Nope, that is not an exponential because that's not a constant change in the ratio. Yes. No, that's for quadratic. Quadratic is second difference. Exponential is just in the y's. OK, do these practice problems. OK, so how do we graph them then? How do we graph them? What do you mean solve it? You graph it by the exponential. What are all the steps? Yeah, remind me because I forgot. It's been a long time. There's not that many steps. There's pretty much just. So first, so first you find the minimum. That would be if it were a parabola, but it's not. Don't these do like quick, quick, quick? No. They do. No, they do this. How do we graph anything? You start from the origin. You pick some stuff and plot. We don't guess and check. You pick some stuff and you plot it, and then there's your graph. So we usually picked what? No, we never picked one, two, three. Oh, two, one. All right, negative one, zero. zero. I'm going to let you guys just do negative one, zero, one, and two. All right, but again, where are you plugging that in? Into the, into the, graph. Into the equation. equation. And these numbers are going in for the exponent. exponent. When you put a negative into an exponent, you need to be careful how you do it. So when you do it on your calculators, make sure that when I plug this in, so the first thing I'm going to do is three parentheses four, and then when I hit that little up button, if I plug in negative one, 
Just make sure the negative and the one stay small. So this is easiest to do if you're in math print mode. So this is easier to do in math print mode. So I would like everybody to switch to math print mode. All right, and once you've done that, what do you get? Three over four. Three over four. So that's a fraction. Okay, then what do I do next? Now plug in zero, which is, three. which is three, because anything to the zero is zero. no. Anything to the zero power is no one, and one times three is three. Okay, if I plug in one, again, you can do all of this on your calculator, and you end up finding that that is 12, and then you plug in two, and you find that that's 48. So. With exponents, are a lot of them going to fit onto a tiny coordinate plane like this? No, not very many. So if you can't fit all of them, don't worry about it. So I'm going to start with negative 1, 3 fourths. So I go negative 1 and 3 fourths would be almost up at 1, but not quite. Then I've got 0, 3. Then I'm going to do 1, 12. And then I'm basically out of space. So there's my exponent. All right, and as you can see, what's happening to it? It's getting really big. How? Slowly, quickly, quickly. It's getting big quickly. You're not going to be able to fit a lot of points on here when you graph them, OK? All right, so for this one, what's the difference? There's a negative. It's a negative 5. Does that change anything about the process? No, no you still do the same thing. And again, I'm only asking you to do negative 1, 0, 1 and 2. So on your calculators, I want you to do that. Be careful when you plug that in. Make sure the 2 is in parentheses. And do what you're supposed to be doing. What do you mean? Where do you go on the calculator for what part? No, you're not doing a table. It's negative 5. It's the same thing, but it'll give you a syntax error if you put the minus sign, so do the negative sign. Okay, does anyone have the first one? Yes. What is it? 5 over 2. And then the next one? Negative 5. Negative 5. And the next one? Negative 10. And the last one? Negative 20. Okay, so we can fit a few of these on there. So we start at negative 1 and 5 over 2. Yeah, Brendan? Uh, you can, uh, do, you, do you remember the same way we put yeah. the table? Yeah, we're not doing it that way now. Okay, so what? I'm glad, but I want you to do it this way. Okay, so where is negative 5 over 2? Yeah, but where, like, is that bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? Bigger than 1. In fact, it's also bigger than 2. two. It's like 2.5. So negative 1 and negative 2.5. So that would be about right here. And then 0, negative 5 would be down here. And then 1, negative 10 would be down here. And then 2, negative 20 would be all the way down here. So what's going on with this exponential function? I just missed my point, but you get the idea. What's going on with my, this exponential function? It's decreasing. it's decreasing at a really fast rate. The one's decreasing at a very fast rate. OK? Do you notice anything from the first one and this one about these first terms? What are both of them? They're both fractions. When you have a negative exponent, you end up with fractions, which is kind of ugly when you're trying to graph it, right? So when you're doing exponential functions, you guys can start at 0, OK? You can start at 0. So just do 0, 1, and 2. Maybe do 3 if you can fit it, but you probably can't. So 0, 1, and 2 is fine. OK, now Brendan says the table works for this on your calculator. That's fine. I want you to do this work. So if you do that on the table and get those numbers on the table, that's fine. But I want you to be able to create this table on your own. 
All right, what's different here? Where is there a fraction? Yeah, does it matter? No. no. If I'm writing this in my calculator, I could do it as a fraction, or how else can you do it? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. It's probably easier to do it as 0. 0.5, but it doesn't really matter. So which numbers am I plugging in? Zero. Zero. One. One. Two. And two. Go ahead and do those. What do you get for the first one? Three. Three. What about the second one? Three over two, Three over two which is 1.5. And then the last one? Three. Three over four, which is 0.75. Okay, what's happening with this one? Instead of the negatives being fractions, they're actually positive. Okay, the positives are actually fractions. And so zero, I start at zero, three. Which way is this exponential function going? down at a fast rate or a slow rate? Slow. Not as fast as the last one, but not like the prairie dogs, no. right? So the prairie dogs was very slow. So 1, 1. 1.5 would be right about here. And 2.75 would be right about here. Could I fit more points on here? Yeah. Probably. Do you have to? No. OK, so your exponential function here is decreasing. So that would be like a population that's dying off. Brendan? And also yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so walk me through again. What are the steps for graphing it? Pick some points. What are they? Zero, one, two, three, and then do what? Plug them in, and then do what? Graph it. Good. Do it. <laughs> 